is between one or the other, but people who are in the fMRI scans, they have to decide. They're not left with any room to run away. Um, and if you know anything about that and sort of what happens when, when we run away and, and why we do it. Yeah. I, think, I think it's a really rich scientific subject. I think it really speaks to the question of uncertainty. Of, and, and you know, I think we can all see now with the economy just how powerful a role uncertainty can play. The fact that we don't know what's going to happen to the economy next quarter or whether or not Citibank or Bank of America will, will be in business in a month. That, that kind of uncertainty can often lead to you know, catastrophic consequences in the economy at large. And yet uncertainty, I think, is a vastly understudied scientific subject. Why not knowing for sure is so problematic for us, makes us so scared, makes us so unwilling to choose and act. So people won't invest in the stock market simply because they don't know what's going to happen. And we don't want to pick a cereal because we don't know which cereal is the best. I think in terms of everyday consumer behavior, some of the best advice comes from a great psychologist named Herbert Simon who he famously distinguished between maximizers and satisficers. Maximizers were the people who always needed to get the best cereal. They weren't satisfied unless they got the best box of Cheerios, the box of Cheerios that would make them the happiest. They needed to maximize their <laughs> utility. And what you find is maximizers, even though they're trying to make themselves very happy, end up being the least happy. They're full of regret. They're always thinking, oh, I should have gotten the apple cinnamon Cheerios. What am I doing with the multigrain or whatever? And you compare that to satisficers. And satisficers are happy being satisfied. They realize that maybe one day they want honey nut, maybe one day they want apple cinnamon, maybe one day they want multigrain. You know, that, that people are funny animals. And, 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 and so they're happy being satisfied. And when you survey people, you find that satisficers, even though they're not trying to always be happy, end up much happier, much less regretful, much less doubtful. They don't just think about all the things they should have gotten if only they'd done things differently. So, so I think in terms of everyday consumer behavior, the best way to get over these kinds of hang-ups, which, which, trust me, I understand where you're coming from, <laughs> can be a very debilitating thing. Um, is, Jonah, is, is, we've is, got two minutes. Can we get one last quick question? Sure. So try to be a satisficer. Hi. I was uh, watching Stephen Colbert about a week or so ago when you were on, and that's what prompted me to commute this long distance to huh. come here. But... Um, <laughs> He was, you were talking about something with somebody who didn't have the ability to emotionally connect in a decision. Yeah. And, and, they, and they actually had a physiological problem that do it. And you were starting to explain it, and then he interrupted you as, as he is wont to do. And I was really, I wonder if you could expand sure. on that a bit. <clears throat> in a minute. Sure. Uh, <laughs> this, this, is, this is work I talk about in the book. It's done by a neurologist named Antonio Damasio. And in the early 80s, and this really helped overturn the rational agent model, the assumption that goes back to Plato that rationality is always great. And he looked at patients who, because of a brain tumor, had lost the ability to experience any emotion at all. So they couldn't feel the everyday feelings of fear or pleasure or whatever that we all take for granted. And you think if you were Plato that these people would be philosopher kings, that they'd make the best set of decisions possible because they'd be perfectly rational. Instead, what you find is that these people become a bit like me in the cereal aisle. They become pathologically indecisive. So they'll spend all day trying to figure out where to eat lunch or which pen to use or when they should set up an appointment to meet with their doctor. Trifling decisions become debilitating. And I think that speaks to the larger importance of these subtle emotional signals that even when we're not aware of the emotions, they really help drive our behavior. And I think Damasio's work has shown us that pure reason, this thing we've been lusting after for thousands and thousands of years, that's, that's not a great thing. It's not something we should aspire to. Pure reason is actually a disease. Thank you. On, on, the, on that note, uh, Jonah, this has been so interesting. I want to thank you so much. Let's give a big hand to Jonah Lehrer for his thoughts here tonight. <laughs>